Hello, hello. I promise you, Tara, before she walks out of the room, your panel will be the second best because I have an amazing fireside chat. <laughs> so we've heard a lot today. We've heard conversations about retail, the future of the fifth, of, of Fifth Avenue. We've heard um, a lot about um, our digital ecosystem and economy. And I think my favorite conversation, of course, as the Deputy Chief Security Officer for MasterCard, is one that talks about trust. And it talks about trust in the context of the global digital economy and the need for cyber to be the key for, the econ for economic growth and to bring um, a lot of economic opportunity. So with that, I have the honor, the esteem, the, the amazing honor and pleasure to welcome Philippe Varon, who's the chair of the ICC. Um, I have followed your amazing career through industry, through committees, committee leadership, through board leadership, and I think what stands out the most is how uh, you were described, and I'm gonna read that for you real quick. The voice of world business. That's a big, that's a big role. The voice of world business, representing over 45 million businesses. So under that, behind that backdrop, first of all, congrats on the new appointment, but I love to hear your thoughts around the current geopolitical landscape, the risk and opportunities, we're gonna go high and then we're gonna dig deep into cyber because you know I'm not gonna let you get off the stage without talking about that. But first, just the, the current geopolitical landscape within the contextual framework of risks and opportunities as now the chair of the ICC. Well, I'm, I'm not going, well, thank you, Dr. J for this <laughs> very positive introduction. And I'm not going to surprise you to, when I say that we are entering in a very you know, fragmented uh, world uh, arena now. Uh, just to, to take on one figure, uh, we have currently uh, probably close to 3,000 uh, tariff barriers in, uh, in, in you know, barrier against trade in the world today, mm -hmm. which is probably four times more than five years ago. So um, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a real uh, it's a real challenge, generally speaking, for trade, but it's also a challenge for data, uh, because among these barriers, and it's not very intuitive, it's a, a lot of barriers on on the data mm -hmm. and cross data, border flow, and so on. So I think this question of cyber is buying on the the, the current situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, we, we talked a little bit earlier about data, data protection, um, and I'm, I'm very, very interested in cybersecurity, of course, specifically, and the current global state of play in the cybersecurity place from where you sit. Yeah, I think this, um, this situation is, uh, uh, is pretty worrying because uh, you mentioned that we have 45 million members uh, on all chambers of commerce. It's a lot of SMEs, and uh, here uh, it's very disruptive because the big corporate they know how to organize, and the SMEs, you know, they are they are not. And so um, there is a, a real necessity uh, to think global on on this matter with the United Nations 11 principles, but at the same time we have to act local and at the national level. Uh, so it's not something which is uh, easy to do, uh, uh, and at the same time we have global, local, and then you have to have in each country a real partnership, private-public partnership, but not uh, you know long-term private-public partnership, mm -hmm. but real time. Mm -hmm. it, it happens that I've been in my life exposed twice. Uh, one on, on the cyber, one on a company called Saint Gobain, <laughs> where uh, you know we had a, uh, a ransomware, and uh, during, we have to work during one week uh, by hand for all the papers. And after, I've been in the nuclear industry, and 
and I've been in the situation to be a, in France, an organism important, vital, so one of the key infrastructure. And you, you see here really that if you don't have a close relationship between the company or in the real time with the public uh, and the state organization, you are lost, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all this doesn't happen by chance and you have to put a number of measures in place to get there. Mm -hmm. At the right place. I, I, I definitely agree. I think in your role, and I'm going to kind of go off script just a little bit, but I'm not going to get I'm not going to get myself in trouble, so I won't go that far. <laughs> but um, just in your role, you are covering, as I said, 45 million, and that is a wide range of businesses, small, medium, large size businesses, all within the ICC. How do you put a framework or thoughts around, or you've already developed five strategic pillars. How does that happen and how do you help us to work with you in pushing those forward? It's, um, it's a good question because we, we have started to, to address it. Um, on our 45 million members, on the chambers, uh, as a global business organization, we have to do um, what is useful for all uh, the, uh, the SMEs. So currently we are focusing on uh, the digital B2B uh, because the B2C business is very digitalized, but not the B2B. Mm -hmm. So we, we are giving to our members, um, you know, we are setting up all the standards to make this happen uh, through uh, through the law that uh, to allow this kind of transaction and also uh, through all the chain. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we give the proper standards. We are also studying, we are putting a one-click link for all the SMEs of the world, either you are in the US, in Botswana, in France or whatever, and each SME could have in one-click access to the uh, ICC databases, right? Mm -hmm. right. So we, we are very practically thinking on how we can help. Then when it comes to cyber, it's, 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 more, uh, it's more difficult, right? And so we have not yet done it, but what we are contemplating is indeed uh, to give uh, for a country, because it cannot, it's not only private, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, for a company, for a country, uh, what are the steps that have to be uh, in place consistent with the United Nations principle and consistent with the documents which uh, have set up the generally speaking, all the key issues that you have to take into account. But we have to mm -hmm. put this into a, a real a checklist of mm -hmm. what is to be done for our members. I not, think yet, not yet done, but in progress. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I think that's important. And I think that is, I, I don't think I can underscore enough or emphasize enough how helpful that will be to all, all of your members to have a, co a succinct list of, I need to do this, 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 and this, because cybersecurity can be overwhelming. Um, and we are in a state of play now where we're talking about emerging technologies. And of course, I have gone all this week, no, not all this week, I've gone all today without the word AI, and I'm going to just inject it here, because that is an emerging technology that, of course, has now exploded. How do you think about, within the geopolitical backdrop, how do you think about um, incentivizing in innovation in emerging technologies and making sure that cybersecurity remains a central part of the development, the, all of the developmental goals there? Yeah, it's, um, it's a very... It's a very good question because there is a potential conflict always between innovation mm -hmm. and regulation, right? Right. Um, right. So um, I think here it's, it's really looking at um, uh, the, the national, uh, well, first the international framework, then uh, oh, you know, this uh, is to address uh, the question of cross-border data flows and all this, uh, then national standards and norms, but for innovation, wha what's very important is that uh, there is a role of the public states and the, uh, the uh, uh, country uh, organization because there's a lot to be done on training, hmm? 
on R&D, on these matters. Mm. And uh, it's this reason why the, the public-private partnership is very important, because if pe people know themselves very, you know, on a real-time basis and interact, then they can work out together on the private and public, the proper training, and, and uh, also when there is some incentives uh, on, on public R&D uh, to, 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 to help and to go on the right, uh, to, to answer the right questions. I love an, an incentivization structure um, because it gives, it motivates and gives businesses and, and everyone within the ecosystem a method in which to kind of develop a framework, think about strategically how they want to attack that framework and continue to move forward. I specifically, when I'm thinking about emerging technologies, I'm thinking about um, the contrast between trust and cyber. And I believe that there is a contrast because I think cybersecurity is our responsibility and trust is what we're instilling within the customer. How do you think about trust within the context of the geopolitical backdrop in the ICC? Um, on this question of cyber, trust and transparency Absolutely. is a very difficult uh, question because we can have trust on the systems and so on, but when something happens, you have to share you know, everything you know about the ransomware or about whatever. You have to share with the uh, public authority on a real-time basis all the elements. And the corporate world doesn't, need, doesn't like to communicate that you have been hurt by uh, uh, you know, malware or whatever. Hmm? We want to mm -hmm. keep this silence. Right? So um, uh, this question of... Um, of trans I, I have no, mm -hmm. you know, miracle recipe here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the only thing is that if you take a, a given country or <laughs> between ICC, if there is a network which is used to work together on a real time, and and uh, the day when something happens, mm -hmm. then you, c you, 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 it's easier for you to be transparent. Mm -hmm. Uh, than if you don't have a relation established. So the, this, these networks are very important mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because if you don't have transparency, you know, uh, you, you lose the interest of the scale of the network, right? Mm -hmm. I, I definitely agree, um, of course. Um, that relationship is what instills trust, is what helps us with our cybersecurity journeys that we're all taking across, across this entire ecosystem. I'd like to give you an opportunity to talk about what the future of the ICC looks like under your leadership and how uh, we can help in terms of our, your call to action to all of us in the room and everyone else who's gonna watch. Um, we've got a few minutes left and I'd love to leave that as the powerful message at the end. As you said, we have uh, we have five yes. goals. Yeah, the, the problem or the challenge when you have a big organization is to have very simple messages and to focus on what has a real impact and to have full engagement. And to have full engagement, and if you have full engagement and the focus, then you have impact, right? Mm -hmm. But there are so many questions in the world today. So we have chosen to focus on five of them. One is uh, our bread and butter since 100 years. We were founded 100 years ago, uh, and our founders said we want to deliver peace and prosperity through trade, which in fairness has been the case in the last 50 years, if you look at uh, the situation of the world. The big question is, I'm not sure it's exactly the case today, mm -hmm. because the world has changed. Industrial policy has been the name of the game, Look at China, look at the IRA in, this, in, the, in the US, right? look at the EU to a less extent. And sometimes the rules of the, uh, the market are not exactly the rules of the industrial policy, right? Mm -hmm. So um, the, here it, it's a challenge. We have big trade frictions, as I mentioned. And our role is here to try to prevent them as much as possible. 
The second point is the rule of law. I just was this morning with the court of arbitration. You know all, you know, when you have a contract, don't forget the last paragraph to put, and this will be uh, driven according to the rules of the international ICC arbitration court. It will save a lot of uh, time and money for you. Uh, but the rule of law, it's, it's something which is absolutely critical. And for instance, we are looking new market on CO2 markets or whatever but we have skills in a number of areas to deal efficiently in some of the big topics. So rule of law is the second one. The third one is about sustainability. And sustainability here this week is completely topical. Uh, I spent a lot of time, you know, I, I share with you, I spent 45 years in industry. So um, I'm an engineer and nobody's perfect. Uh, <laughs> and, and I am French as well, so it's a double <laughs> win, right? Um, I have a strong conviction that we have the technologies in the world to sort out a big part of the climate matters. You can make aluminium, you can make steel, you can make cement without CO2, okay? And even not commercially, but in three, four, five years, we can eradicate the methane emissions from the oil and gas industry. We can drive and with EVs and so on in the future and, and so on. So, uh, we have a massive challenge, which you know, it's a situation which is worsening every day, but we have the solutions potentially. So uh, our big challenge is speed in rolling out these innovations across the world. It needs a lot of financing. And I was yesterday evening with Deloitte, which is me, as I said in the next, uh, to, to, to solve the issue, you, we need $200 trillion, right? It's not uh, it's something. Even if they say we can be below to, to 50 trillion if, if we work very well, but it doesn't matter. But we have to change the way we finance it. Mm? The role of uh, uh, somebody called, you know, is called Ajay Banga. Uh -huh. <laughs> he was sharing ICC uh, two years ago. And I think the World Bank uh, should really finance with proper equity because uh, like the multilateral development banks. Mm -hmm. You know, when the multilateral banks and World Bank, when they put one dollar, private sector is putting 0.3. The leverage is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So they have to change the way they invest. We have plenty of private money and the private money will follow. Mm -hmm. So we have to change. We have to change the, also the rule of Basel III because each time a bank put money in an African country, for instance, it has to recognize in its balance sheet a big debt and mm -hmm. liability. We have to change this for climate projects. Mm -hmm. So there are things to be done. There are things to be done in IP, because uh, we have to put IP, uh, we, we, I, I, you know, the, the, the innovation is to be rewarded, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to pay companies for IP. but. We have funds that can pay for IP for developing countries and so on. So, I mean, big challenge. So, ICC, we are trying to find a way. I will be in Baku uh, because financing is, is a key matter. But I was, was on, 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 we are working on circular economy. I was on the plastics treaty. We must have a treaty on plastic as uh, very, very quickly and the, under the United Nations umbrella, even if it's a small one to start. And we will then progress but we cannot continue um, uh, to work on rate of recycling in plastics in the world is 9%. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's unsustainable, right? right. Uh, not in the US, look at the global piece. So my p third priority is about making sustainability happen as quickly as, as possible. The fourth one is digitalization. Mm -hmm. So we are to progress on cyber. Thanks to you, Dr. J, uh, we will go will increase our level of understanding <laughs> and what we have to do, and we will keep in touch. And uh, the last piece, uh, it's about multilateralism. You know this thing, mm -hmm. which was supposed to do the good of the world, right? But, you know, since uh, somebody was called Mr. Trump, he decided to uh, froze the appellate body, uh, to freeze the appellate body of WTO. Mm -hmm. uh, or Mrs. Godzi, who she's the, uh, the uh, general manager. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to fly, right? Mm -hmm. Multilateralism in this context, 
of blocks with industrial policies which don't follow always the WTO rules. Uh, we have to make things simple. We are between us here. Uh, um, <laughs> but you see how China supports WTO. It's full support. Not sure that they really comply with WTO every day, right? Uh, the US has taken some liberty vis-a-vis -vis WTO. You know, we, um, and even to freeze the appellate body gives a strong signal, right? Probably sometimes the Europeans are herbivores in, in Jurassic Park because they continue to follow the rules of WTO. But one, um, one thing is very important. If WTO were not to exist today, we have better study, uh, economic study, there will be a loss of five points of GDP for all developing countries. Five points GDP and the trade flows will reduce by 30% to 50% depending on, on the countries. So at least and in the United Nations yesterday, the uh, president of uh, RDC said nice, <laughs> very nicely, we don't ask to the uh, United Nations to lead us to paradise, but we ask United Nations to prevent us to go to hell. <laughs> and uh, I think it could apply. It could apply to multilateralism and WTO, so we, we try to help here as global organization of business. We have a seat the observer in the United Nations, so we, we can try to find solutions. But it's not an easy task, so this is a, a short summary on, mm -hmm. on, on what we want to do. So I appreciate your comments today and being able to sit and ask you the hard questions in your fourth month as the chair of the ICC. Very, very insightful, very, very thoughtful. I appreciate it. I really thank you for inviting me. And uh, no, I have uh, a special positive feeling vis-a-vis -vis MasterCard and the uh, <laughs> former cha cha CEO. And uh, I love Ajay and uh, we, 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 we keep in touch. And Dr. J. Yes, uh, that's easy we, to remember. You can now say I yeah, love Ajay and yeah, Dr. Yeah, J. And Dr. <laughs> J. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It goes very well together and I think uh, we'll, keep, we'll keep in touch. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, absolutely. Uh, With that being said, I told you all this was going to be your favorite one. Um, have a good, good, good afternoon. Make Make sure you engage with us outside and uh, welcome to lunch. Thank you. Thank you.